Welcome to Otterbein University. We're thrilled that you are all able to join us here today on this beautiful day. And we're thrilled with everyone who is watching on our live stream right now from coast to coast for this exciting, exciting announcement. I've got to say, I am personally very excited about today. We've been working on this for a long time, and finally we get to share this exciting plan with the world and get our collaborators on and off campus all working together on this. And so it's exciting, I know, for Otterbein. I know it's exciting for Antioch University. I, I, they might not you don't know it yet, but our future students will be excited about what we're going to be working on together. Our, our partners that are the employers that will work with our students, all the folks that connect with our universities and connect with higher education will be excited about what we're putting together and starting and launching today. This is really about collaboration. We're going to use that word over and over and over again. Too often higher education is about competition. It's sort of a zero-sum game and who can capture as many students or whatever. The reality is we need to work better together, and we're setting up a model to do just that. But first, before we get into all that, I want to introduce our collaborator-in-chief, Bill Groves, the Chancellor of Antioch University. Welcome, Bill. Great. Thank you, John. And I just wanted to say thank you to the Otterbein community for hosting this today. Um, and uh, it's the first time meeting you by this kind of live stream, so I appreciate that opportunity. Uh, we will be sharing some news with you soon. Um, but I wanted to give you a couple numbers first, and those numbers are 71 and 0. Now, Antioch has never been known for sports. It, <laughs> but at one time in its history, 1914, it did field a football team, and there were at least three colleges that they met that season, one of them being Otterbein. The score was 71 to 0. We took a thrashing. <laughs> so I thought you should know that part of history, that they, we have met before on the, on the field. Uh, we have been waiting for a grudge match for 118 years. I don't think it's going to happen. And so we've decided if we can't beat them, join them. And that's what we're here about today. Well, we've got to add football to a list of things to work on together. This is great. Well, we are thrilled to be announcing today something that we think is new and innovative in American higher education right when we need it. As I said before, too often higher education is competitive. It's a zero-sum game, and we're fighting especially over the 18 to 22-year-olds, and there's just not enough to go around, and we're all spending our financial aid on merit aid, going to high test scores and high GPAs, and just sort of fighting over this student population. And places like Otterbein have always done more to reach out with need-based aid to underserved populations and live out our mission. But still, if you think about who's going underserved in our higher education system, it's so much more than 18 to 22 year olds. There are lots of people in our communities that can be served by what we do, but often don't know that our institutions are for them too. And there's an embarrassment of riches of the number of students out there that deserve to be served if we can just stop thinking competitively and start thinking collaboratively. And it's never mattered more than now. A college degree or post-secondary education has never mattered more than it matters now. All the new jobs require post-secondary education. This is where the opportunity will lie in the future. And gone are the days where you can end school at 22 and say, well, that was fun. Don't have to go to school anymore. I can't imagine a career that's not going to be vastly different in 10 years, much less the 40-year career arc that most people have. Students are going to be coming back as adult learners. And so what we're announcing today with Antioch University is the formation of an independent university system that we are the co-founders of, but we fully expect will expand with additional partners as we go. The fundamental idea is this. Each institution gets to play to its strengths. At Otterbein, we are great, and I mean great, at 18 to 22-year-old traditional residential education. We're fantastic, it's a transformative experience. And when you think about Otterbein, you will think about, and I'm glad you think about, students playing frisbee on the quad and going to the small classroom with faculty members that know their name and then going to play Division III sports and going to the fraternity and sorority meetings. We love that stuff and we're never giving that up. And that needs to stay distinct. And so members of this system we are building will keep separate and distinct residential traditional age undergraduate programs like what Otterbein offers. But that opportunity I was talking about before is the opportunity of the future in higher education, the, the, where the need exists, and that is in adult learners. And so graduate programs, 
adult degree completion programs, professional certificate programs, are the opportunity area for collaboration where we can leverage the resources of multiple institutions to better serve that population for all of our good. I'm gonna let Bill tell you how it's gonna work. Thanks, John. So I, th I think that we should all keep in mind that, again, this is about collaboration. It's also about building on our strengths. Uh, while we are announcing today a collaboration and affiliation between two institutions, Audubon University and Antioch University, our vision is much larger. Our vision is that this will be a national system of schools who will all bring to the table their own strengths and their own opportunities to leverage those strengths for the benefit of the system. Uh, the system's strength from Antioch will be its graduate programs, but its adult learning opportunities as well. Um, we have already spent several months talking about that. Uh, we have engaged in that process with, of course, our vice chancellors and vice presidents of academic affairs, deans and chairs of departments, and some faculty in those conversations. And we know that we can identify numerous ways to leverage the strengths that both parties have to bring benefit to our students, to the students that we would like to attract to the system on a national scale. We have campuses from coast to coast. Otterbein has a huge, beautiful campus here in Ohio and an opportunity to expand beyond Ohio. Um, so what are those opportunities? Taking some of your graduate programs, integrating them with some of our thoughts and, and uh, building on those programs, taking them to some of our locations, uh, building new modalities for those programs. We have a strength in online, but we have also a strength in what I'll call hybrid learning, which is low residency learning and hybrid learning. So uh, building on those modalities, building in our geography, taking your programs, adding to them concentrations that we have skill sets in, building new programs, and most importantly, I think, uh, is the opportunities to, atta to attract learners to our system who are not really uh, served today. And that's through workforce training, workplace educational programs. That's something that Antioch has begun to do over the years, um, and we want to expand on that opportunity. Bringing education to the student. And I'm going to let John talk a little bit more about that. I think that uh, I'll come back to it in a few minutes, but John. Thank you. So there's a couple of common threads. To be a part of a system, you have to have a line in a few areas. We want to make sure we talk about those because we do imagine this expanding to other institutions as well. One thing that will bind us together is a focus on workforce development, that students come to our institutions with goals and dreams in mind. And it's important we be accessible and affordable to help those students get where they want to go. The other thing that higher education has not always been great at is connecting those employers to our student programs. We have sometimes in our histories put on a great academic program and crossed our fingers and really hoped it's what employers want, but we never really asked. And you're actually right now, we're coming to you live from the point at Otterbein University which is our answer for that, which is the employers that lease space in this building work hand in hand with our students and our faculty so that we are bridging that gap between the workforce developer, that's higher education, and the employers that will someday employ those graduates. It's happening here every day, but it is limited to our campus. That is something that we need to solve for the entire higher educational system. And so as we think about the powerful ways we can be working together, we can think about opportunities for traditional undergraduates at a place like Otterbein to be leveraging the resources of a larger university system, which will have more corporate connections, which will have more internship sites and job placement opportunities, more study abroad opportunities than one school could ever provide. There's also going to be great opportunities for traditional undergraduates to enter accelerated degree programs. So you can be admitted to Otterbein and Antioch simultaneously into a five-year program that gets you both a bachelor's from Otterbein and a master's from Antioch in certain fields. And what a powerful difference that will make, shortening time to degrees, getting folks into the workforce faster, and saving them tuition dollars as they go. It's also the case that we'll be advancing in adult degree completion. Ohio is not unique. There are lots of places in the country, including where we are right now, where there are more people with some college and no degree than there are folks with a bachelor's degree or higher. And so if we can tie in and help those people finish the degrees they started, 
they'll be more prepared for the workforce they need. And when we talk about, especially in central Ohio, what are we going to do with all the workforce that needs to come here to feed Intel and all the other needs around here? Maybe they're already here. Maybe they're already here in underserved populations that we just need to tap into and do a better job of serving. It's also the case we'll be doing graduate programs together under Antioch's leadership, where we'll be able to tie professionally related fields in areas of demand right into what employers are looking for. And last but not least, as Bill mentioned, we imagine search certificate programs. Some folks have said, you don't need a whole bachelor's degree or a whole associate's degree. And so you can do a short-term certificate program with individual students or through an employer itself to uh, serve their current workforce, the important thing there is that it be a stackable program, not a dead-end program, that those programs can stack into degree attainment over time. And in those ways, what we are building can be a workforce talent and equity driver for our region in central Ohio, every campus that Antioch has, and all the new opportunities coast to coast will be developing as we go. The other thing we have to have in common is of course common mission and common roots. And I know, Bill, you want to talk about that. Yeah. And I do want to talk about mission. I want to follow up on something John said about adult education. Mm -hmm. um, I think folks probably know about Antioch and, and its history, but I want to remind folks that Antioch was kind of on the cutting edge of adult learners 50 years ago. It was in 1964 that Antioch, which was at that point only Antioch College, started to imagine its mission being expanded beyond the four walls of Yellow Springs, Ohio. Uh, we started our first adult program in 1964 in New Hampshire with a uh, school of education. Be it, after that, there were 35 different locations for Antioch programs from that point to about the mid-1970s. They were all over the country uh, and some of them in foreign lands. But we had a law school in D.C. There was a large school of education in Philadelphia, San, San Francisco, San Antonio, Anchorage, Honolulu, about every corner of the United States. Some of those exist today, and those are our current campuses. The point is this. We found a niche, and people laughed at us and said, you're crazy for doing it. But what has happened is we've evolved into what has become Antioch University, focused on those learners who got left behind at the 18 to 22 year old mark and are still learners today. We believe in lifelong learning. And I think there's plenty of opportunity both in the works, workforce training and education, but also in graduate education and degree completion. So let me talk for a minute about mission. I said, and John has said, that this is about building a collaboration, a new model of higher education that brings that kind of collaborative energy and not competitive energy. It's more than that. And I think that uh, uh, John spoke about the fact that there is a inflection point here in higher education, uh, a real sense that there needs to be consolidation within the higher education, or higher education market. There's also an inflection point in this nation. And I don't think anyone can be watching the January 6th commission hearings and not realize that we are at a very big point in our history of reevaluating what it means to be a democracy. This has a, been a focus of both institutions, certainly uh, social justice, democracy, and working for the public good is a responsibility of higher education. And we intend to address the issues of democracy and social justice as part of this system. It is a mission-driven system. And we expect that the other partners who may join us in this affiliation and in this system to all be part of that need that the country needs uh, to recommit ourselves as, the, as democracies, colleges, and universities. So I will remark that both Horace Mann, who was the pres first president of Antioch University and the founder of public education in America, understood how critical education was to democracy. It was also something that was well understood by William Griffith, the first president of Otterbein University. We need to recommit ourselves to that. I'm uh, sure most of you know that Coretta Scott King is one of our graduates, and I'm prone to quote her husband, Martin Luther King, from time to time. But it was he who said that, and I need to make sure I get this right. Uh, nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and passionate stupidity. 
and we need to address the issue of education. Uh, ignorance is the folly of tyrants, and education is the antidote. So we need to make sure that we are focused on that. Um, it all is all about equal access. It's about providing a diverse education space. We both have a history of being one of the first institutions in America to admit blacks and whites in the same classrooms before the Civil War. In the case of Otterbein, it was 1847. In the case of Antioch, it was 1852, both before the Civil War and before the end of slavery. Um, we have been committed to that mission ever since, and I know Otterbein has as well. But we know that we need to educate critical thinkers and engaged citizens, that we need to not only train for careers and gainful employment. That is not the end of our responsibility for the public good. And to meet the challenges of today, we will focus on doing exactly that in all the programs that we offer. So I just thank you for your time on that. I hope you're seeing the power of what we're putting together and its great potential. And one of the things that's on my mind today is we can look at two, the two initial founding members of the system we're building and understand the great power in our alignment of mission, in how our programs fit together almost like puzzle pieces, that Antioch has a lot of things that we would love to offer here, and we have a lot of things that Antioch would love to offer on their sites, and together we can really serve a lot more students and lift a lot more people up that are deserving. And, and so you can see the power, but one thing I'm sure of is today's the beginning, not the end, right? And none of us in here, as long and hard as we work on putting this vision together, can understand what this will look like in five years or 10 years or 20 years or 50 years when they will pull this, I say tape, but whatever the digital version of tape is, out of the archive to say this is where it started. This, what we hope, is a national movement in American higher education away from elitism and prestige and towards access, affordability, and mission orientation through collaboration, not competition. And I expect that will resonate from coast to coast with a lot of our peer institutions. And I want to say to the faculty and staff in the room here and the faculty, staff, students watching online, we're going to do this together. This is the beginning of the public part of the conversation. where We can really build something special together and make transformational educational opportunities available to people that may didn't, maybe didn't have access before because that's what Otterbein has been about for 175 years and Antioch University has done in spades through their whole sp uh, history. So in, in closing, I want to make sure that we know this is the beginning, not the end. Bill? Thanks. Uh, just a couple closing comments. Um, you know, I think that uh, Horace Mann had uh, said at his 19, excuse me, 1859 graduation speech, which was the last one he gave, by the way. He died a month later, um, which I'll come back to in a minute. <laughs> but he challenged the students at that graduation to be ashamed to die until you have won some victory for humanity. That has been the creed of Antioch since then. It is, uh, it is our mission. It is our goal to take up that challenge that Horace Mann laid out for us in light of all the changes in society since then, to not sit on the sideline, to not be bench warmers, and to be actively engaged in that process of educating for democracy and social justice. We spent many years taking our mission to others. We took it across the country, and I think that is a new era and a new time for Antioch and Otterbein to imagine how we do that in the 21st century. And I'm excited to imagine the thousand programs that will bloom from this effort. And I want to thank everyone for being here today for this announcement and uh, looking forward to working with all of you as we move forward. Thank you. Well done. Thank you.